少女战士。I'm not really one for award speeches, so I'm gonna try and keep this quick and simple before carrying on to the event summary. Thanks again for subscribing to my channel. It's only been about two years since I started it, and the channel's already grown this much, with it reaching 4,000 subs a couple weeks, maybe a month ago. And my most viewed video hit 100,000 views. So yeah, thanks for subscribing, watching my content, and hopefully this channel can grow further than it already has. Unlike the previous subscriber specials, I decided to make the characters and story summary separate, since most people see, you know, an hour-long video, and they either don't want to watch it or they'll put it off and just end up not watching it anyways. So this will just be going over the story of the Glory Day DJ Max X Girls Frontline collaboration event, while the Clear Fail and Fairies videos will be after it. The event begins with M950A Calico, a character who embodies strict discipline and adherence to rules, waking up Thunder. She often finds herself at odds with her counterpart, Thunder, whose approach to life is characterized by a more carefree and relaxed attitude. The two talk a while about their attitudes before Calico brings up the whereabouts of AEK, a team member renowned for her elusive nature. Thunder only knows that she left earlier that morning and nothing more. Amid their search for AEK, Calico and Thunder, along with K2 and TMP, who have joined them and are a part of their team, stumble upon a concealed chamber that holds historical significance within G and K. This chamber, previously an arcade room, stands as a symbol for the team's past and serves as a reminder of the changes that have occurred over time. After finding AEK in the old arcade, the team is suddenly confronted by an alarm, alerting them to the impending arrival of SF, causing the team to make a crucial decision regarding whether or not to engage in combat. The deliberation process reveals differing perspectives within the team, with Calico and Thunder advocating for a proactive approach, while others express hesitancy due to their lack of recent combat experience. Ultimately, the team reaches a consensus to proceed with the mission, preparing for a confrontation with SF. The leader of the team, K2, reluctantly agrees to this course of action, acknowledging the need to stay vigilant in the face of a potential dangerous adversary. Following a successful mission, AEK expresses frustration with the lackluster nature of the enemies and her teammates. She questions how long she'll have to endure this mundane existence. TMP inquires about her well-being, to which AEK responds with indifference. The team speculates about the absence of backup forces from SF and concludes that it might have been a passing SF convoy. Calico, however, dismisses this as an opportunity for alternative training. Calico and Thunder secretly enter an electronic entertainment room to spy on AEK, who they suspect may be slacking off. They wait in ambush, but are met with hours of waiting, during which AEK doesn't arrive. AEK eventually does show up and logs on, but she remains inactive and unconscious. Calico and Thunder deduce that she's connected on a deeper level of cyberspace and may be engaging in some sort of electronic warfare training. They decide to infiltrate the same channel to determine what AEK is doing. Thunder suggests consulting their team leader, but Calico is confident that they can handle the situation and trust Thunder's assistance. After initiating the connection, Calico and Thunder enter cyberspace, experiencing disorientation. In this virtual realm, they lose track of time and struggle to adapt. Eventually, they regain some awareness and discuss their surroundings, realizing that AEK is missing. Calico's vision slowly returns, leaving her bewildered about their location. In a state of confusion, Calico questions their whereabouts and demands to know where the heck they are. Calico and Thunder, upon fully regaining their senses, find themselves in a vast cyber city, bewildered and disoriented. They frantically wonder about their location and what to do next. As Calico panics, Thunder makes a reference to a time machine, but quickly realizes it's not time for jokes. They contemplate their predicament and decide that the first step should be to log off and report everything to K2. However, their attempts to disconnect fail, and both remain trapped in the unfamiliar cyber world. Both decide that they explore and solve this mystery together. In this strange and surreal cyberspace, they encounter a multitude of palm-sized electronic fairies, the city's peculiar residents, who seem to pay little attention to the two uninvited guests. 
Calico and Thunder discuss the fairies and wonder if they truly have freedom or masters. As they ponder their next move, they decide to approach a fairy with rabbit ears, who appears to be waiting for someone. The fairies express suspicion, but eventually agree to talk to the newcomers. Calico inquires about the city's identity, and the fairies inform them that it's called Pocket City. However, when asked how to leave this place and return to reality, the fairies seem perplexed and insist that this is the only reality they know. This revelation leaves Calico and Thunder even more confused. Their conversation is interrupted when a group of panicky fairies rushes in, exclaiming that SF is approaching. Calico and Thunder demand to know how the fairy with rabbit ears recognize them as SF. Soon enough, SF forces appear and Calico insists on protecting the fairies. In the midst of the confrontation, unexpected gunfire eliminates the SF troops, and K2 makes her appearance. She assigns Calico and Thunder the task of covering the fairies' retreat to a safe place while her team handles the SF forces. Calico, Thunder, and the fairy with rabbit ears decide to guide the fairies to a bar called Hot Tunes in the city center, which serves as their temporary shelter. As they prepare to escort the fairies further into safety, Calico and Thunder wonder about the term ATK that was mentioned by the fairy with rabbit ears, but leave it for later. K2 takes charge of battling SF and vows to protect her friends in the city. The battle with SF concludes with the enemy forces retreating to the city's outskirts. Calico and Thunder express relief that the situation is under control, attributing their success to their team leader K2. However, they soon notice that K2 is unresponsive, despite functional communications and the absence of any apparent accidents. As Calico and Thunder enter a different bar, Calico finds the place strangely familiar, resembling something she's seen back at HQ. The fairy with rabbit ears excitedly welcomes them, referring to them as ATK. Calico and Thunder are taken back by the warm reception. Curious about this ATK, Calico seeks an explanation from the fairy with rabbit ears, who describes them as a battle organization that comes to the aid of Pocket City whenever SF attacks. They learn about the individual members and their roles within ATK, with ATK being an acronym for AEK999, TMP, and K2. Confused about their newfound association with ATK, Calico and Thunder graciously accept the fairies' gratitude for their assistance in defending the city. As they chat, Calico and Thunder observe the fairies getting ready for a break and discover that music plays a significant role in their lives, providing a source of energy and solace. The fairies offer them a music player and earphones to join in the experience. During the musical interlude, Calico and Thunder reflect on their own existence and the allure of a peaceful life devoid of conflict. They discuss the possibility of staying in the cyber world forever and the uncertainties surrounding their roles and responsibilities. When the music ends, Calico speculates that AEK may be drawn to this place because of similar thoughts. The fairy with rabbit ears confirms that AEK did visit and mentioned going to a mysterious location called the Graveyard. However, the graveyard's exact whereabouts remain a mystery. AEK's purpose for going there is associated with a legendary figure known as the Master of Pocket City, though the fairies are unsure if this figure truly exists. Calico expresses her intent to find AEK and questions how to start the search. The fairy with rabbit ears suggests seeking the help of another ATK member named Cat Warrior, who is nearby. Calico and Thunder recognize Cat Warrior as TMP, you know, the cat ears, and they are left in shock as they wonder why she is present in this place. The two eventually track down TMP, and Calico confronts her, demanding an explanation for her presence. In a fluster, TMP attempts to flee, but Calico and Thunder chase after her, pushing through the crowd. The fairy with rabbit ears wishes them farewell as they depart. Despite their pursuit, TMP keeps running without looking back, and Calico devises a plan to corner her. Calico and Thunder split up, attempting a pincer attack to catch TMP. Thunder takes a left, while Calico approaches from above, successfully tackling and pinning down TMP. Calico questions TMP about her involvement in ATK and the whereabouts of AEK. TMP insists that they're all working to protect the Cyber City, but claims not to know AEK's current location. Calico threatens to confiscate TMP's merchandise as a bluff to get information. As Calico is about to continue her interrogation, Thunder taps her on the shoulder, revealing K2's presence. 
K2 warns them of incoming trouble, the approach of SF forces. She explains that these streets are filled with Griffin signals due to their actions, making them a target. K2 reveals her ability to summon echelons from the database to help combat the approaching SF. TMP boasts that she played a role in this ability, and K2 initiates Fever Mode to deal with the threat. After the battle, TMP expresses relief, and K2 praises her teammates for their performance in the cyber world, though she admits her neural cloud would struggle in a more significant conflict. Calico presses K2 to explain her presence, and K2 eventually admits to being a part of ATK, but emphasizes that the name is just a playful moniker the fairies gave them. Calico is infuriated by the revelation and the fact that K2 kept her team in the dark. K2 apologizes for not sharing the information earlier, and reassures that finding AEK is their current top priority. TMP chimes in, claiming to have located AEK's rough location and mentioning the discovery of the hidden graveyard within Pocket City. Calico is shocked and demands an explanation. TMP blames Calico for ruining her lead, revealing that she had been following two fairies who were the only ones aware of the graveyard's existence. As a tense conversation unfolds, a pair of fairy twins approaches, asking if they were looking for them. The group, consisting of Calico, Thunder, TMP, and K2, follow the fairy twins towards the mysterious graveyard. The fairies don't communicate verbally, similar to Thunder, but their actions speak louder. Calico expresses her desire for K2 to finally reveal what's going on, prompting K2 to divulge her involvement in discovering the world. She stumbled upon it while exploring the database recovered by TMP from the arcade. K2 explains that she interfered with the world to combat SF, whose data in this world originated from the Griffin database. She didn't report this to HQ due to curiosity and ancestral memories linked to this world. The conversation delves into the origins of the cyber world, revealing that it existed in real life and holds precious memories for humans from half a century ago. K2 decided to clear out SF, recruiting TMP for assistance. However, they discovered that SF generated rapidly, leading to their current situation. TMP defends AEK, claiming that she's not the type to prioritize play over work, which raises questions about AEK's involvement. Calico and K2 believe AEK entered the world independently without their knowledge. K2 explains that if they involve Fal, AEK will be punished, which prompts them to continue their search for her. Calico expresses her displeasure at K2's secrecy and inability to log off, while TMP and K2 apologize for their roles in the situation. K2 reflects on her actions, realizing she may not be a good team leader. Their banter continues, with Calico teasing TMP about her escape attempt, which was influenced by fear. K2 notices that they may have arrived at the graveyard, and the group proceeds to explore. Inside the graveyard, the atmosphere is eerie, with tombstones bearing unusual inscriptions. The fairy twins suggest that even non-living things can die if completely forgotten. They express their hope to not be forgotten, implying they are memories themselves. As they venture deeper, the group hears a voice promising hospitality and mentions the end of the moonlight. Thunder and Calico are puzzled by this, but before they can react, the fairy twins disappear. Suddenly, the ground rumbles, and figures draped in shadow, identified as wraiths, emerge from the earth. The group is baffled by the wraiths, with TMP explaining their origin. Calico is ready to fight, and K2 remarks that they can't afford to be sitting ducks, suggesting they have to face the threat head-on. The battle ensues as the wraiths attack. After a heated battle, most wraiths are defeated, but a few escape. The group discusses the possibility that someone is controlling them. Calico goes after the remaining wraiths and corners them near a team stone covered in graffiti. As she prepares to eliminate them, she's pushed aside by a mysterious figure. To everyone's surprise, it's AEK. She reveals that she came to rescue the wraiths and found their lost items, tiny, cheerleading pom-poms. She gestures for silence and uses her powers to save the wraiths, transforming them back into fairies. Calico and her team are left stunned by AEK's actions. AEK explains that she made friends with these fairies and saved them from SF's capture. The fairies express their gratitude, and AEK introduces them as Sehra and Nina. However, the group struggles to distinguish between the two identical fairies. AEK also reveals that the fairies were captured because they remembered their names, and saving them required opening the graveyard. 
Thunder and Calico are still perplexed by the situation. AK clarifies that she's not interested in staying in this world permanently, and was merely completing her mission. The team had previously believed she was trying to remain in the cyber world indefinitely, which led to misunderstandings and tension. The conversation is interrupted by the voice they heard earlier, which AEK identifies as the Master of Pocket City. The voice questions its existence and role, creating confusion among the group. Suddenly, the earth shakes and the mysterious figure emerges from a tombstone, generating a blinding light and chaos. AEK urges her teammates to get ready for a fight as the figure reveals itself. The mysterious figure greets everyone and suggests they missed her presence. Calico and her team confront Fail, who is the master of Pocket City. The team demands answers about her intentions, but Fail suggests that they rely on music rather than violence in this world. TMP accuses Fail of summoning SF, to which she cryptically acknowledges her role in modifying the cyber world with borrowed data, aiming to re-educate the fairies whose memories she tampers with. Fail's goal is to remove names, songs, and an individual identity, believing it leads to true happiness through the enjoyment of melodies without any concerns or thoughts. She reveals that even the fairies they interacted with have had their memories wiped repeatedly. The team confronts Fail about her actions, arguing that it isn't genuine happiness, but rather a selfish pursuit. Fail dismisses their concerns, asserting that her way is the best for everyone. AK, Thunder, and TMP resist Fail's ideology, emphasizing the importance of personal experiences, choices, and free will. However, Fail insists that her doctrine is for their benefit. As the tension escalates, Fail implies that she's tempered with their neural cloud preventing them from logging off. This revelation shocks the team as they come to terms with their situation. Suddenly, Thunder and Calico find themselves in a different place, discussing their current predicament. Thunder reveals that AEK instructed her to open fire in the corridor if Calico was present, as a way to resist Fail's control. Calico expresses understanding and acceptance, which surprises Thunder. She further reveals her own internal struggle and self-doubt, hinting at the illusory nature of this world. Their conversation is interrupted by an alarm, signaling incoming enemies. Thunder expresses concern for the rest of the team, prompting Calico to question whether they truly matter to her. Thunder asserts their importance, especially Calico, and believes their experiences in this world are essential for growth. Despite her initial doubts, Calico decides to continue their journey together within the simulated reality. Thunder accepts, realizing that she needs to face challenges in order to change herself. However, their dreamscape suddenly collapses, and Calico commends Thunder for passing the test. Thunder is puzzled, but Calico pushes her into the void as the world crumbles around them. Thunder questions Calico's actions, but Calico reveals that she chose to follow a different path, asserting that the real her is not the one Thunder believes in. Thunder pleads for her to return, but Calico remains resolute, declaring her choice is to leave this world. As the connection between them weakens, Thunder tries to convince Calico that she's not a mistake and that her existence is valid. Calico listens to reassurances, but ultimately accepts her fate and encourages Thunder to move on without her. Thunder continues to affirm Calico's worth, but she disappears into the abyss, leaving Thunder in a desolate, empty place. Thunder, in solitude, repeatedly reminds herself that Calico is not a mistake. In a nightmarish maze, AEK finds herself trapped, desperately seeking an exit or resisting Fail's advances. She refuses to align with Fail, who claims to have a misguided understanding of rock and roll. K2 and TMP suddenly appear, having navigated through the maze with the help of the idol fairies Sehra and Nina. They arrive in the nick of time to support AEK. Fail dismisses their efforts and reveals her intention to integrate them into the city, removing their boredom and regrets. AEK feels helpless in the face of this powerful adversary. K2 and TMP criticize Fail for betraying music and the city's inhabitants. The idle fairies, who remember the maze, confirm that they can guide their friends out. Fail taunts them and implies that she has even better candidates in mind, hinting at Calico and Thunder. AEK demands to know what Fail did to them, but Fail disappears. AEK, K2, and TMP regroup, with TMP chastising AEK for risking herself by sending the idol fairies first. K2 emphasizes that self-sacrifice won't resolve past mistakes and encourages AEK to make amends. 
They discuss their plan to find Calico Thunder and confront Fail. K2 assigns AEK the task of locating the missing duo and decides to go after Fail herself. AEK heads to Klazikai, where something awaits her. The team gears up to execute their plan and sets off, leaving the graveyard behind. In a different location, Fail addresses a crowd in a black square, extolling her vision of a city without history or rules. She revels in the chaos she's created but is interrupted by the arrival of K2, the Idol Fairies, and AEK. Fail engages in a verbal battle with K2, dismissing her attempts to confront her. She continues to manipulate the fairies, renaming Windtalker as Rabbit Ears. K2 exposes Fail's manipulation and uses his song as a similar resistance. The twin idols, Sehra and Nina, perform, leading Fail to recognize the song's significance. K2 urges the fairies to listen to the unique music of Sehra and Nina and remind them of the music Fail stole from them. Fail counters by claiming that as the city's master, she owns everything. K2 denounces Fail's vanity and greed and challenges her to a proper fight for the city's fate. Fail reluctantly accepts, warning that they can't defeat her. K2, however, is determined to reveal their ideals and engage in a battle for the city's future. After a battle with Fail, K2's dolls manage to scratch her, but Fail dismisses the attack as inconsequential. K2 announces her intention to retreat, prompting Fail to invite them to a welcome party. Fail introduces her new friend, Calico, also known as Miss Fallen Angel. The crowd applauds her arrival, and Fail claims to have purified her heart and freed her from the constraints of societal norms. K2 disputes Fail's claim, asserting that they will save the city and everyone in it, including Calico. Fail challenges them to try, and Calico prepares to sing. As Calico begins to sing, Fail urges her to accept the music and the soul she offers. K2 insists that the isn't what Calico truly wants, but Fail counters that she knows Calico better than anyone. However, a fairy named Sue, who had previously been known as Rabbit Ears, suddenly regains her memories and declares that this isn't the city she once knew. She interrupts the performance, and Fail tries to regain control, but Sue's determination to reclaim her music and purpose strengthens. K2 and the idle fairy seize the opportunity to pull Calico away from Fail's grasp, causing confusion. Sue is held by Fail, who claims that without her consent, the memories will never return. Despite this, Sue maintains her resolve to sing and keep her memories alive. K2 and the others plead for Sue's release, but Fail sees music, singing, and names as harmful and refuses. Sue requests that they return music to everyone. In an intense moment, Fail absorbs Sue's power, causing her to disappear. Fail revels in her increased power, determined to make the entire world part of herself. K2 vows to stop Fail, both for her friend and for the fairies who have been affected by Fail's actions. The confrontation continues as the battle between K2 and Fail escalates. An indeterminate amount of time has passed as the intense battle between K2 and Fail finally reaches its conclusion. Fail is visibly drained, her power source depleted. K2, although still ready to fight, remarks on Fail's deteriorating state, suggesting that she should give up. Fail acknowledges that she can replenish her power by absorbing wraiths, but realizes that she has consumed all of them, including Sue, Sehra, and Nina. K2 emphasizes that Fail has no more audience or musicians left in her world, as everyone else has been absorbed or driven away. Fail defiantly claims that she can still summon more support with her music, but is met with skepticism from K2 in the absence of any response to her call. However, Calico, Miss Fallen Angel, suddenly appears. Fail recognizes her as the one she's been trying to summon. Calico greets everyone, but when Fail urges her to sing, a surprising twist occurs. Instead of performing the song Fail expects, Calico starts singing a different one, indicating she's made a choice of her own. This choice is revealed to have been influenced by Thunder, who explains that she didn't restore Calico's memories, but instead created new ones by showing her around Pocket City. Thunder recounts their experiences and how Calico chose her new song, which marked the end of Pocket City as they knew it. Fail struggles to accept this turn of events, claiming that the temporary friendships and music chosen by Calico herself are not valuable. However, K2 and her squadmates argue that the citizens of Pocket City still want to be heard, even without humans as their audience. 
Theo is unwilling to believe this and insists that someone must still support her. At this moment, TMP and AK arrive, offering a device that reveals the truth about Pocket City. It's revealed that Pocket City is a virtual world accidentally activated from an old gaming device, and its memories were incomplete due to corrupted data. Fail learns that her memories were not a mistake, but rather shaped her into what she is. After watching a video that shows the citizens of Pocket City's music being heard and appreciated in the outside world, Fail gains a new perspective on her existence. She decides to keep the scar on her left arm as a reminder of her past, but also as a symbol of her newfound courage to face the future. The scene shifts to Squad Attack's camp, where the members are preparing for a live stream concert. Clear, formerly Fail, joins them, having accepted her new identity. The squad shares banter and jokes as they ready for a live performance. K2 mentions that she watches the live stream every week, and 5-7, who receives the squad's report, chuckles at their antics. The event concludes with a reflection on their ongoing journey, acknowledging that while some adventures may end, life continues to unfold. Claire expresses her determination to embrace her new self and create happy memories with her companions. The story ends with an invitation to revisit Pocket City's music and memories, promising an exciting adventure in the future. Thank you for watching. Please follow my Twitter for updates, and please check out my other Arknights and Azure Lane videos as well. There will be a teaser out this coming Monday for next week's character summaries.